pleased to be here in the Sheep River Library uh, with uh, Gunnar Peterson, another candidate for uh, for the council for Turner Valley. So uh, thank you for uh, agreeing to spend some time with us on this. I'd like to uh, begin by having you just describe a little bit about your history in Turner Valley. How long have you been here? What brought you here? What your roots are here? You have family? Just a little description so people get to see the personal side. Okay. Well, thanks for having this because this is one of the things that I like about poor campaigning because I had people ask about why I didn't have any signs out. And again, it's just not financially responsible. So this is why I appreciate this because it will get my message out. Um, I grew up mostly in Longview. We moved to Longview when I was seven. Biggest reason for that is just because the teachers in Calgary were on strike. And so my parents just wanted me to keep going to school and my brother was starting kindergarten. So we moved from Calgary to there and lived there, moved out of Lombi when I was 21, moved into Black Diamond. And with the job that I had growing up, I was a heavy equipment operator. So I lived in all the small towns on either side of the number two, depending on where the job was, you know, Vulcan, Langdon, and little towns like that. And my home was always Black Diamond, Longview, and Turner Valley. Went to high school in Turner Valley, so been here all my life. And let's see, since I was seven, maybe spent a total of six years that I didn't live in either Black Diamond, Turner Valley, or Longview. Mm-hmm. So I did some of those years in Oak Tokes, and then I think three years in Calgary. Yeah. So. so very familiar with uh, the needs of, uh, of small town in Alberta, what people Definitely. want, what people appreciate, those sorts of things. I'd like to think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. So. That's good. So um, what, what got you interested in, uh, in running for council at this time? Um, The reason I'm running this time, it has a lot to do with the amalgamation. It's, there was a lot of answers out there that people didn't know. And they asked me because I'm one of these people I like to prepare and know absolutely everything I can, which sometimes takes me longer to make decisions, but I like to make informed decisions. And I just had enough people say, well, you should run. And I remember when we were voting for the, for the federal election, um, Jonathan was there and I mentioned to him that I was running and he's like, oh, why are you running? And I said, well, just try and get some more information out there for people. So um, the last four days, I've spent a lot of time going through the finances of the amalgamation and looking at the numbers so that I can answer questions that people had. Um, regardless, I want people to have that information. Get elected or not, it's all about transparency and letting people know what's out there. So you like to dig into the facts of the situation. <laughs> Definitely, when it comes to numbers. So yeah. um, that's what my background is. Well, I run heavy equipment, but I've been running my own tax office for the last four years. And prior to that, I was with another corp uh, company for three years doing taxes in the Oak Tokes area. And prior to that, I was with h and Block. So I'm very much a numbers guy. I like looking at things like that. And, you so know, you, you help individuals with their taxes or businesses? And corporations. Okay, so yeah. you have a service that you provide in that area? Do I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's why when somebody, I actually told a friend of mine that I was looking into and he's like, you started with the financial pages, didn't you? I'm like, yep, I sure did. And yeah. it's just, it's one of those things. Is amalgamation going to be to the point where it's going to cost us money or is it going to be better fit for us? Yeah, it, it is going to depend on exactly how it's done. I suppose, which is where the stewardship comes in from council. Yeah, like there was, there was one person that mentioned to a friend of mine and they said, well, what about this $2 million long-term plan that it's gonna cost us? And there is a $2 million figure there based over three years, right? So there's the one-time cost and then there's a couple of yearly costs that are gonna be in there. So yeah, when you add all that up, that's $2 million. But that's only the cost of what the amalgamation is gonna cost in those three years. It doesn't talk about anything about the savings we're gonna have the new potential costs that we're gonna have with the RCMP coming in, that charge to all the municipalities and everything. So people are looking at and getting information about one small picture, not realizing what it's gonna look like at the big picture, which is kind of the way I do it. I look big picture in. Yeah. Okay, so so I'm getting the impression that if you were to be elected to council, you would definitely be uh, uh, ramrodding and riding on the uh, financial aspect of the amalgamation. Yeah, it's about keeping people accountable. Yeah. Right. Um, I worked on the Calgary Ring Road. That's where I was running heavy equipment until COVID hit. And then we decided I was going to stay at home for my eight twin girls. Mm-hmm. And it just, it was one of those things that while we were building the ring road, it was all these extras coming up and it kept going where we need this much more for this part of it. Mm-hmm. Well, if we would have done the job right the first time, right, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have to be doing this, you know, 
when when I started running heavy equipment, my dad said, only need dirt once, right? Mm -hmm. And that didn't make sense to me for the longest time. Like, I mean, I, I started working with him when I was eight years old on weekends and around school, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it finally dawned on me, well, he only gets paid to move the dirt once. Yeah. So figure out and plan ahead on this is why we're doing it, so we're not going back and fixing other mistakes. Right. You know, and it just made sense. Well, the ring road, with some of the extra costs, you know, they didn't need to be there. Like, there, I remember there's a dirt pile up there that I pushed three times, yeah. right? Yeah. We only got paid to move it once yeah. to finish the job, but the company I was working with, they got paid to move it three times. So again, right. you know, not transparent, not optimizing the cost of that job. Right. So I'll just like to back it up. You mentioned you have twin girls. Are they I, school uh, age? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're in grade three here in Turner Valley. Okay, so uh, that's, that's enough to keep you interested in uh, the school system here. And uh, yeah. what about recreation and uh, sports for, for uh, So and... right now my girls, um, they're involved in two things. They are taking swimming lessons, but unfortunately we have to go to Oak Oaks because we don't have a year round pool here. Um, they're also involved in gymnastics, which again, we're going to uh, Oak Oaks one, because when we first started getting them into the program, it was the only spot we could get them. And then COVID hit and we went through all that stuff. Um, but they were just comfortable there. So, you know, if we would have had something here that they could have got into, and it's just, there wasn't enough. Like, there's just not enough space for people. Yeah, so uh, an indoor pool is, is one level of expense, but something like a place, a gymnasium, might be something else, particularly with an amalgamation opportunity. Yeah, so with me living in, you know, I lived in High River for a little bit, um, and I've seen the growth around Okotoks, right? And a lot of those places, one of the things they got in common is the Rex Parks. Now, I'm not saying Turner Valley or Diamond Valley, what we're gonna be is gonna be big enough for that, but we should definitely see whether or not we can utilize this pool to turn it into year round, because the costs are there year round, and the maintenance is there year round, but the revenue is only there for a few short months, right? right? Talking about optimization, if there's a way to turn that into it, whether it's refurbishing this one or creating a new one, I think that's gonna generate more, because there's a lot of people where you know, with school girls and swim, that they've had to go to High River Oak Tokes to try to get their kids in. We we were almost, because I want the girls to learn how to swim, we were almost contemplating to even take them into the YMCA in Calgary. Mm -hmm.